Ongoing delays with the U.S. Postal Service have been a big issue across the country. Congressman Sean Kasten is trying to call attention to the issues facing that agency. And Sean Kasten is actually joining us now live today to talk a little bit more about this. Hello to you. Hi, how are you? Great, great. You know, it seems like we're always talking about issues with the postal system with some of these delays. Where are we right now? Where do we stand? Do we see a fix coming down the line here anytime soon? Well, I, I can tell you just in our office, I mean, a year ago, we, we were making a lot of stink, um, you know, speeches on the House floor about the need for reform. And our understanding at the time was that a lot of this was COVID delays and the polar vortex we had. In this year so far, 50% of all the calls to our district office are, are postal delays. You know, mm. seniors who can't get meds, some tragic ones of people who are saying, I'm, I'm being told I have late payments on bills I haven't paid and I haven't got my paycheck yet either. What do I do? And it's not the postal workers. The postal workers are doing a great job. But the problem is that the, the Senate still has not confirmed the Board of Governors who are the people who will hold Louis DeJoy accountable. And I can't believe we're still having this conversation after a year. Louis DeJoy is the Postmaster General. He was quite controversial uh, under the Trump administration uh, when there was talk that they were pulling out machinery and things like that. But he's still in charge. Uh, is he really to blame for the problems? Uh, the post office has been in trouble for decades. Well, look, there are some issues, and I've been a you know an advocate, loud advocate for um, some of the postal reform acts to make sure that they they don't have to prepay all their pensions. These are fixable problems, but you got to understand, during COVID, a lot of postal workers got sick. A lot of postal workers had to take off time to care for loved ones who were sick. It got really cold. That was a problem, right? Every business in this country dealt with those problems and nimbled to them. What DeJoy did was cut overtime cut staffing levels. He's actually changed the delivery standards so that when he says things are on time now, he's given himself five days instead of the three days they had before. That's not making things better. It's moving the goalposts and making things worse. And it's the kind of thing that in the corporate world, a board would hold him to account. And the problem that he's not being held to account is he doesn't have a fully staffed board right now. And that's really ultimately on the Senate to fix. Um, not on the not on the letter carriers to fix, not on Congress to fix. The Senate just needs to confirm those people um, and get them into those positions. Okay. In the meantime, though, you've got you you said it right at the beginning here. You've got 50 percent of the calls that are coming in, the complaints that are coming in about are about postal delays. So, what do you tell those folks who are calling your office or calling even our newsroom? What can they do to see something happen, to see some movement here, because they're not getting anywhere? Well, uh, please call us, contact our office. It, it, it helps, number one, sometimes, you know, a, a letter from the congressman helps things move a little bit quicker and we'll do what we can there. It also helps give us better understanding because what we're, what we're learning is that some of these issues are really very different, you know, community by community, postal sorting center to sorting center. And to the extent we have a better information, sometimes we can work a little bit more constructively with the folks on the ground to understand where those bottlenecks are. So do that in the first instance, but we're going to do everything again to make sure that you don't have to call us anymore. Are you seeing inequities in where there are postal problems, be them uh, rich communities, poor communities, minority communities or not? I'm not sure that we're smart enough to say that yet. There definitely are striking differences, just one community to the other. And my, my sense, this is my gut, my sense is it has less to do with structural inequities as much as sort of where there was a bottleneck in the system already. Um, and then, you know, as, as these cutbacks have gone through, those bottlenecks were exposed. But I think it's a little bit premature from what we can see in the data to draw those the more granular conclusions. All right. And so it continues. We uh, will keep watching it. Thank you so much to Congressman Sean Kasten for weighing in on this today. We appreciate your time. Thank you.